Have you ever looked in your lake and seen what you only could describe as an alien egg? Rizoans certainly look like something out of this world and are often mistaken for many common bond, pond or lake inhabitants, like salamander or frog eggs, or even algae and moss. Here is a picture taken by Aaron and Melinda Clark of Rizoan on Lake Lawrence. So what are they? Rizoans are filter feeding animals, despite their resemblance to some algae. Their name, Rizoan, translates from Latin as moss animal. There are over 4,000 species found worldwide with about 50 species living solely in fresh water. Each species of Brazilian can have a different appearance. Their large gelatinous colonies are eye-catching and intriguing. What we, are see, what we see in the water is the colony made up of hundreds to thousands of microscopic animals called zoids. The zoids grow in a unique rosette pattern on a substrate they create themselves. Each rosette contains several zoids. They form a firm and slimy base which attaches to anything stationary below the surface of the water. The colony can range in color from clear to green to a brown red and resemble a brain, usually around two to four inches in diameter with some colonies growing to two feet or more, which is what we usually find or see here at Lake Lawrence. The native range for these Bryzoans is east of the Mississippi River, as far north as Ontario, and as far south as Florida. Its range has expanded westward into Texas and the Pacific Northwest. They seem to prefer nutrient-rich or eutrophic waters with low turbidity, which is what we have here at Lake Lawrence, and a lot of the lakes in Thurston County, Washington. Although some studies have shown that it prefers lower nutrient waters, they feed on high nutri nutrient waters. They exhibit several methods of reproduction which contribute to its tendency to be a potential nuisance species in outflow pipes, water filters, and fishing nets. They produce larvae through sexual reproduction during early spring. These larvae then develop and can reproduce during the same year. Rizoans also produce statoblast, groups of cells encased in a hard casing that allows them to survive winter conditions and colonize the lake again the next spring. Some scientists equate these bundles of cells to seeds. Some have a limited tolerance for extreme cold weather and drought. Every species of Brazoan can reproduce via budding, a sec type of asexual reproduction that produces a small clone of the parent zoid. Growth is temperature dependent and usually begins around June. They exhibit rapid growth with warm weather and are sensitive to drops in the water temperature which is why we're probably seeing a lot more of them here at Lake Lawrence this year because of the warmer weather that we've had over the last, the last winter and this summer. Colonies typically begin to disintegrate in early September as the season begins to change. When a colony disintegrates, the st statoblasts are released and moved to a new location by water currents or another organism, or they remain in the sediment until the following spring. The diet of these Brazoans consist of bacteria, algae, and protozoa. They use tentacles lined with microscopic hairs located at the end of its body to catch food particles and draw them toward its mouth. The body cavity is U-shaped with the tentacles circling the mouth. Waste is expelled just below their mouth. If you have Brazoans in your lake, it is an indicator that you have a healthy ecosystem. Brazoan feeding habits mean they filter the water as they feed, like oysters in salt water helping to consume algae and remove suspended sediments. Due to the flow of water and available food items around the colony, other small animals tend to congregate around the masses. Snails, insect larvae, and crustaceans will pick off the Brazoans' miss while eating, sometimes inadvertently eating pieces of the colony as well. This concentration of small aquatic animals around the Brazoans will attract larger predators like bass. These larger fish are not considered a source of predation on Brazoans and typically only consume them when no other food source is available. Though they have an overwhelmingly positive impact on the ecology of a lake or pond, during a particularly good year they can form a bloom and like algae, too much can be a bad thing. There is also some research to show they can harbor a parasite that can impact salmonoids, especially rainbow trout. Because of their positive impact on lakes, the removal of Brazoans is not necessary. If their growth during a bloom is impacting water flow through pipes, they can be removed by scraping the colonies away from where they are anchored. 
Though regrowth can occur if not completely removed, all the colonies will disintegrate in the fall when the weather begins to cool and should be completely gone by the end of November. If you like this video and like to see others like it, give us a thumbs up and then take a look at some of the other videos we have on our channel that are displayed here. Hope you all have a great day at Lake Lawrence or wherever you're at watching this video. Goodbye.